Okay. A couple of weeks ago, we watched an episode of Country Fail, where they showed the lambs being born at Cannon Hall Farm. As each lamb was born, the people caring for them, the shepherds, made sure that they were cleaned off and then got to feed the first milk from their mother. They stressed the importance of that milk, not just for the nutrients, but for the first feed, the first bonding of mother and baby. Once the feeding was over, the mother and newborn lamb were placed in a separate pen where they could bond. They could spend time getting to know each other, smells, sounds and tastes, so that when they were put out into the open field, the mother always knew which was her lamb, and the lamb would know which sheep was its mother. That relationship of love and care, sometimes based on the practical fact of needing to be fed, is one that grows a trust between the two, just as it does for a mother and child in our human world. Sometime afterwards, I caught just a snippet of a programme showing a shepherd who kept his sheep out in the open. He didn't own a farm or have sheds for shelter, so all the lambing was done in open fields. The presenter asked the shepherd how he could do it, and he said something like, it's all down to the relationship. I know every one of the sheep and they know me. I bring them food. I keep them safe. Every day I come up to the fields and I spend time going round the whole flock. I check every sheep. Have they got food? Are they healthy? Are they safe? And this is especially important when we are lambing. That relationship of love and care is important to the sheep and also to the shepherd. From that relationship grows their bond of love and trust in just the same way as it does for parents and children in our human world. The shepherd shows that constant care throughout the whole life of the sheep and the lambs, checking and feeding daily, and in that care the relationship continues to grow. In my Bible, the passage that we've just heard read from John's Gospel is headed Jesus the Good Shepherd. And Jesus does indeed speak of the relationship of trust between the shepherd and the sheep. He suggests that the sheep recognise his voice, that he knows their names, and because they trust him, they are willing to follow where he will lead them. The sheep need to know that they are safe that they are free from fear and that they will have food provided for them. And they trust the shepherd who provides all of these things. Like the sheep, we need that same sense of trust and security in all our relationships. And especially at this time, we need to be assured that we are safe and secure and that we are not at risk. Psalm 23 reminds us that God cares for all of humanity as a shepherd cares for his sheep, by green pastures, in the shadow of death. In all places and situations, we can trust in God who is with us. The psalm ends with these words. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. These great words of hope give us courage in times of challenge and difficulty. They sustain us when we are feeling vulnerable, as many of us are at the moment. In these last few weeks, we have all found ourselves in this new place that we call lockdown. We are being encouraged to stay at home, to limit the contact we have outside the home, and so we are separated from the people who we love and trust. We may be feeling isolated 
as Cameron explored with us last week, or locked in as Ben explored the week before. But we are people of Easter faith. We hold on to the promise of resurrection, eternity with God, breaking out of the box as Claire shared with us on Easter Sunday. Goodness and loving mercy follow all the days of our lives, leading us to God's eternal home. As the shepherd lives with, journeys with and cares for his sheep to give comfort, strength, sustenance and life. So God in Jesus is with us our Good Shepherd. In this period we find ourselves assessing what is important to us. Yes, we do want to be safe, but do we want to do that at the expense of being separated from those people we love? Yes, we do want to protect other people from this terrible virus, but do we want to do that and deny ourselves the company of others, the chance to meet, to share experiences, and even to be denied the pleasure of the wonderful world that is around us. We are learning what we value and need the most, and perhaps accepting that some of the things that we used to think were important, we can actually live without. There is much discussion now about how we will get out of this and some people are even beginning to say, I can't wait until we get back to normal. I'm not sure what normal is or was or whether we can go back to what it was. But we can go forward to what it needs to be. A society built on loving and trusting relationships. Perhaps this is the time for us to reevaluate. The other day I was thinking about the story in the Bible of the Israelites who, after escaping from Egypt, wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Although we are told there are occasions when they are recorded as wishing they were back to where they were, most of what we read speaks about them looking forward, looking forward to the promised land. God is leading them to a new place, a new life and new opportunities. And on that relationship with God, their trust is also their hope. Sadly, as we are locked in our homes, there are many in our world who are not. They are people who are displaced for many different reasons, living in refugee camps, travelling through dangerous situations to get to a place of safety. They too are looking forward with hope to a new and better life. As we find ourselves in our situation today, we might ask, what are we holding on to? What is our hope? What do we need most of all to give us a new life? In the church, we are in the season between Easter and Pentecost. This gospel passage is set in the lectionary today, and yet at a first reading, it is not about the resurrection. It doesn't really seem to relate to the Easter story that we have been following the last few weeks. However, there are two things we might miss if we just read this as Jesus the Good Shepherd. The first thing, although it comes at the very end, is that Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is a key verse in our Christian teaching. The purpose of Jesus' life and ministry was to bring life for all people, life that can be lived abundantly. The words of Psalm 23 remind us again that God is journeying with us, 
and we can trust God. That God who is revealed to us in Jesus is the shepherd who cares for and provides for the sheep. In this time of waiting on God, I encourage us all to ask what we do need to do to renew that relationship that will give us fullness of life so that we can indeed look forward with hope. The second thing is that the passage uses the word gate five times and the gate is important. In fact, Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find new pasture. The new life that Jesus promises comes through his death on the cross, his self-giving sacrifice. A life given so that we may have life and have it abundantly. His commitment in life and death was to give himself, as a shepherd would do everything to save his sheep, so Jesus has done everything to save his people, even given his own life. It is through his suffering and death, and then his resurrection, that life is given for all who will believe. Jesus said, I am the gate, because the gate is the cross. That place of suffering and even of death is the way through to eternal life. Jesus holds the gate open for all and they will hear his voice, trust in God and follow him as the sheep have followed the shepherd. As this passage continues in John's Gospel, Jesus tells us that he is the Good Shepherd, the one who will freely lay down his life for his sheep. As he lays down his life, he opens the gate for all to enter. This is the story of Easter, new life for all. Today's passage encourages us to think about our own lives, to think about what we really need to feel safe and to live life in all its fullness. The passage assures us that Jesus is with us, caring for us, sustaining us and supporting us. All of us have many physical needs, but we have spiritual needs too. Jesus has opened the gate. He invites you to enter so that you may have life and have it abundantly. Amen.